Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Good morning, everyone. Um, this has been a challenging few weeks for Durham Public Schools. It's extremely difficult, but I know that we'll get through it. One of the reasons why I love Durham is we look our problems straight in the face and we figure out how to tackle them together. As we do that, we're continuing to focus on the learning and the well-being of our students. I want to say to our employees and all the families that have dealt with so much frustration this week, we are listening. We know the anxiety has been high. We know the stress of school closures has been really harmful and we want our children back in school. The board is continuing to listen. We're continuing to gather data and we want to make the best decision possible. All employees, we want to have a raise from their 2022-2023 pay. And at our February 22nd meeting, my goal is that we leave with the decision around pay for this year. It's time for us to find a solution so we can raise our pay, be fiscally responsible, and consider future budget priorities for the district. This Thursday, we will be meeting with Durham Association of Educators. We've heard loud and clear that educators want to be more engaged with the board. And so we'll be thinking about how do we develop a structure that will have a future engagement from our educators to the Board of Education. While we're navigating these challenges, I'm so grateful for Ms. Kathy Moore, who has uh, agreed to serve as our interim superintendent. She brings tremendous leadership and experience to Durham Public Schools, and her energy and her passion for our students and the great work that we're doing is gonna be uh, excellent as we tra navigate uh, our path moving forward. I want to introduce Ms. Kathy Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Armstead. So as, as I've transitioned into this role, it's clear to me through conversations with the board and, and trying to get up to speed this, just this last couple of days that my immediate focus really is to continue to move forward with DPS in many of the excellent directions and work that is already happening. Despite our immediate challenges, and they are uh, important, um, there are a lot of great things happening in the Durham Public Schools, and I think we have to make sure to remember that as we also work through the challenges that are before us. I am focused on making sure that our teachers, our staff, our students have all of the resources that they need in order to be successful and move forward with kids in the classroom. That is our work. That is our spark. I spent the first part of this week really trying to focus on talking to as many people as I can on staff to try to understand and speak with the board to really get the lay of the land of where we've been. I've watched some things from previous board meetings. I've read some materials. Um, just trying to make sure that I, I have a good understanding of where we are so that I can support the board and the board chair in their quest to try to go ahead and be ready to make a decision on February 22nd. I think wherever we land, our employees need that stability and that certainty of where we are going to land. Having come from a neighboring large district, I know that large complex systems and large comprehensive financial um, decisions uh, and, and parameters and structures are in place and it takes some time to navigate through all of that and really get to the, to the bottom of what's happening. There are a lot of strengths in Durham Public Schools. I've experienced some of that already from cookies on my desks the first day that I get here from an instructional assistant to emails from staff that we've swapped back and forth over the years um, with that neighboring county to running into a parent, a Durham parent, and in the grocery store with the kindergarten student and having a quick conversation about what's going on. So I think it's clear that there is a community focus and a community energy around the support of Durham Public Schools and I want to engage in that and to leverage that as we seek solutions moving forward. There are so many dedicated teachers and staff members working hard every day to support our students. It's inspiring and we need to do everything we can from a leadership level to support that. Um, and to reiterate what the chair said, uh, the one thing that I've heard most from folks that I've talked about is we need our kids in schools. I had several of those emails waiting for me that were sent before I even knew I had email. And so, um, and I afford the, those to staff so that we can all see what's going on and what kind of feedback we're getting. Um, it's important for that feedback to, to, to be shared. It's important also to note that our, our primary responsibilities and our biggest resources are people and our funds. We need to take care of our people and we need to be fiscally responsible with our funding. Those are priorities that go hand in hand. 
the challenges that Durham is facing with regards to increasing compensation, not just for classified staff, but for certified staff as well, is not a unique challenge. This is a challenge that public school districts across this country and in North Carolina face. And finding those financial resources to recruit and retain top talent from top to bottom, as well as working within fixed resources, is a challenge. Um, and we have to make sure that we are, we are doing both. So I think it's important to also remember that the current situation that we are in, with its challenges, with the, the messaging, the disappointment, the, the frustration that people feel, came from an attempt to squarely head into what is needed, what's the compensation that we want to provide for our staff, how do we become market competitive, and I think remembering that that's where this started, notwithstanding um, messaging and implementation uh, problems that we've had, is, is where we need to remain grounded because we've got to come out on the other side of this continuing to be committed to the uh, implementation changes that are needed in order to fund those compensation changes. And this is not a one year or a one moment solution. This is a journey and it will take several years to get to where we need to get. And that goal line will probably change frequently because what it takes to have a competitive salary and what a living wage look like does not remain static either. All of our employees are critical to our success and the ones that are at the focus and the part of this current situation that we're getting through, our classified staff, clearly are the staff that are on, many of them are on the lower end of that pay scale. And so what a market or competitive or living wage looks like for them is important and they are critical to our success with our students in our schools. As I mentioned earlier, this is not just a DPS issue. Looking at what's happening coming forward with funding, there, there are a lot of places that we need support and help beyond just DPS and our local commissioners and our communities. There's a statewide obligation to fund staff in schools. We know that funding for public schools from the statewide perspective has not kept the pace that it needs to in order for us to be competitive. That is a place that we need to continue to turn and advocate for the resources that are needed for our schools. We also know that interim temporary pandemic relief funds are coming to an end at the beginning of the next school year. And that's something that we have to pay attention to as well that will have an impact. So there, there are a number of things at play here. Um, and we want to make sure that we are rebounding from the pandemic, that we are preparing for fiscal transitions that are happening, and that we continue to keep our eye on what it means to support all of our staff and our students as we move forward. And that includes compensation, absolutely. My focus, as I conclude, is really to reiterate that I am here to support the school board as it works to resolve issues, to be that bridge between understanding what's, what staff information can be provided, what community stakeholder feedback is uh, regarding this work with our classified employees. And, and so supporting that school board and the directives that they give is really important. We need to work with our county commissioners, um, speak with the county managers so that we understand priorities, not just for how we get through the, the situation that we're in right now, but how we prepare for moving forward beyond this year, because we've got a budget presentation coming up for 24, 25 in the next month or two. And we also need to continue to collaborate with our stakeholders to continue the important work of the Durham Public School System and to continue to support our students. That's it for me. I'll turn it back over to questions now. Thank you, and we'll ask uh, Chair Umstead and Ms. Moore, uh, Interim Superintendent Moore, to join back at the podium. And if you will, stand and give your name and your media outlet and your question. We would appreciate that. And what I will do is just a round robin. We'll start because I know all of you, so I'll call you by name. And then if you have second questions or follow-up questions, then we'll go back through the room. So we'll start with Ninth, Ninth Street Journal, Audrey Patterson. And happy Valentine's, by the way. Hello, yes, I'm Audrey with the Ninth Street Journal. Um, um, and I was wondering um, when we will see the comptroller's report um, that uh, is currently under, um, being undergone, um, and if there's any timeline right now for completion of this. 
Uh, thank you for that question. The comptroller began his work and he is working diligently trying to review all of our financials and the different processes within our system. As soon as it has available, we'll make sure that we have it public. Yeah. Has DCS asked the county for emergency funding? And uh, do you have plans to, if not? Name and media outlet. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Josh Schaefer, News and Observer of Raleigh. I have spoken to the chair of the county commissioners and she waits uh, for a decision from Durham Public Schools on a long-term solution to our challenge. I'm sorry, could you the last part? Yes, yeah, so I've spoken to the chair of the county commissioner. She is eagerly awaiting for Durham Public Schools to bring a proposal. Um, so we need to, the Board of Education needs to make a decision about long-term funding solutions. Carla. Um, the Durham Association of Educators um, demands to know pay. Is that possible? What will you say about that? Can you repeat your question one more time? Um, I would like to know if it's possible to not pay costs. To make no changes. So uh, thank you for that question. What we know is the raises that people, um, that our staff received from July through January was unsustainable financially for our district. What we do know is whatever solution that we end with, we want all employees to receive a raise. Okay. Monica. Monica Casey, WRAL. Um, going back to your county question, long term, do you anticipate needing to ask for more funding next year? <laughs> you want me to start? Sure, go ahead. Okay. So I think that um, it just a, my experience in the past and thus far as I've come in a few days, this is day three, um, there are always going to be needs that are part of a ask for a commissioner, especially, for example, there's a legislative raise that's part of the two-year budget that's already in the budget, and there's going to be funds needed for that. There are health insurance cost increases. There are retirement cost increases. All of those are increases that would likely be part of a request for the county in terms of additional dollars. And then folded into that would be the priorities that the board will determine, hopefully in discussions in the near future, around um, other locally funded needs, whether that be raises for classified staff or certified staff, outside of the things that are already legislative required. I, I would anticipate that, yes, there will be an ask. Hey, Tom, George, ABC 11, uh, this is for both of you. Uh, obviously, this centers around pay and, and uh, staff members uh, feeling that they're, they're not getting enough, obviously. But in addition to the, uh, the large severance package from the previous superintendent, uh, you know, your interim pay is on par with that uh, and also on par with much larger districts. I mean, what do you say to people that are concerned of the optics of that? And do you feel that that's a, a fair compensation for you? I'm sorry. So I think when you look at, at the compensation package, obviously, being on par with the previous superintendent, those dollars are already there. And I think if you looked at the full compensation package, including benefits, it's actually a little bit less than what the freer superintendent was making because there are other things that are not necessarily compensation that are part of, um, part of the, the salary package. Um, and so I think, those, the, I think the dollars are there. That's a discussion with the board. And um, you know, we arrived at something that was that was doable and commensurate with what the previous superintendent was doing. I don't I would think that would be expected. Evan? Uh, Evan Sirius, Spectrum News. This question is for Caddy. Um, so, you know, you mentioned that you were, of course, at Wake County for several years and you've dealt with large structures like this. Is there anything comparable that you had to deal with in your time in Wake County that is similar in scale to this that maybe you can use going forward? And then my second question is, right now you have the interim tag. Do you plan to be here long term? Uh, no, I will not be here long term. I'll start backwards. Um, <laughs> this is a short term gig. Um, my role really here is to uh, deal with the day to day issues that are important, that are necessary, guided by the board as they prepare to hire the next superintendent. And they will be preparing to hire the next superintendent. Um, and with regards to, you know, my previous experience with issues, I think that, you know, one thing I can say is that my previous district, we were, and I'm not sure if we've fully caught up, they, f they have fully caught up yet, uh, behind in compensation for classified staff with regards to what Durham was paying. Durham has been paying more per hour to classified staff than the district that I was in. And so there was a lot of work in the last few years in that district to raise compensation. And, and looking for how you do that and how you plan over multiple years to do that, I think will help me as I look to figure out what the options are here that we can present to the board for doing that work here um, even further moving forward. Lee? 
Hi, Ann Lish, Summer from North Carolina Public Radio. Um, former Superintendent Vega had said um, that the original salary study that HIL consultants conducted was flawed. I heard him say that at the town hall mm -hmm. staff. Are there any flaws that you've identified in the salary study itself apart from its implementation or it being over budget? It's an excellent question. The more we continue to understand each individual within the uh, salary study, the more questions that have arisen. And so I think we need to take a step back and evaluate that whole compensation study, evaluate different categories of employees and where they fall in different grades to have a better sense of uh, is the study what we need for Durham Public Schools. Haley. Haley Baker, CBS 17. We've talked about kids have been out of school for several days. What is the plan to make up these days and any future disruptions? Is it gonna be taking away spring break, Saturday classes? What's the plan? I guess I could do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a question I had as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, to, a couple of ways to look at it. There's, there's not a final sort of conclusion to that yet. Um, almost all districts, we have requirements under law for how many hours of instruction and how many days we need to be in school. Almost all districts exceed those hours of instruction and number of days that you need to be in school. So there is um, what a lot of districts historically called banked time that can be used when students are not in session before you have to start making up time by, you know, you know taking teacher work days or looking at vacation days and making them student days. Um, we have, we are, we don't, we have, we are not there yet, but we will be if we can, if we have additional school closures. We will need to look at days that right now are scheduled to be student holidays or staff holidays, and we will need to look to see whether or not those need to be student days. How many more days until you reach that point? Um, either one or less. <laughs> Still waiting on that because not all schools have had the same number of days out. I think we made our way around the room if there aren't any more questions. Monica? Uh, Monica Casey, WRAL. We've talked about the, the county side. Are there any plans to go to the state and have you all had any contact with the state about this issue specifically? Um, as Ms. Moore so eloquently said in her comments earlier, we know that the state has not funded public education in the way that it should. And so all of the energy that in Durham is excited to go to the state and advocate for a state budget that fully funds public schools, that fully funds Leandro to make sure that our employees can be paid what they deserve, that certified and classified employees, and that our school systems have what they need to thrive. We know that public education is crucial, it's vital to the success of our state, and we have to take that energy to the state of North Carolina in this budget season. Uh, Lish Farmer, WUNC. How were you able to calm some of the walkouts from transportation staff? Um, it looked like that was a relatively small number of staff that wasn't called by DAE. So, um, was there anything that the school district did to calm that, and what would you do if there were other sort of small-scale walkouts like that in the future that could threaten a school day? Um, we have had many conversations with our employees. I had some conversations this weekend with employees to understand the needs and the concerns that they have. And the goal is through these continued conversations and proposing solutions that we hopefully to see don't see any more walkouts. It's related. I'm Josh Schaefer, News and Observer. I was going to ask if we know specifically what transportation workers want, not being part of the educated union. That's an excellent question. Uh, our transportation want, folks want raises, right? And so the conversation is what does that look like for them? So many of them have dedicated so much time to Durham Public Schools, whether starting as a bus monitor and now being um, in positions of management, right? So all of them have had conversations around what does this raise look like for us and been really clear about what they want to see. I think we'll take this one last question from the Ninth Street Journal. Okay. Audrey Patterson, Ninth Street Journal. Um, so we're aware of the former superintendent severance pay, um, but we're wondering, uh, did the CFO see severance pay as well and how much? So that would be a personnel matter and we're not allowed to discuss those. Thank you. I'm sorry, Evan did have one last question. I just had one more question, Reese, uh, Superintendent Moore. He's, he said this is something that won't take just one moment, one year. This will be a long process. Then you have some of the Governor Cooper saying yesterday or the day before that there needs to be a solution right now. How do you kind of respond to that? Well, 
so I can say yes both and mm -hmm. um, because there are immediate steps that can be taken across the state of North Carolina to ensure that all of our employees at all levels are being provided a competitive wage but that is always going to be an iterative process because markets change living wages change and and so you're always going to have to be doing that work and studying and, and keeping up to where things need to be um, we are a public entity that's funded through public dollars um, and so how we respond to sometimes um, what's happening in the corporate and business world as well because we're all in the same pool for our employees um, is important and so we, we have to pay attention to that so I would say yes and for both.